last question. Growing up, were you very religious? No. Uh, I went to Catholic school from okay. kindergarten right through high school. So you were raised Catholic? Yeah. You believed in God early on, or were you sort of unsure? You know, Catholicism to me was like a subject in school. You know, when you grow up, especially during my time, you know, with the nuns and the brothers and all of that, um, I always believed in God. I mean, God makes sense to me. Intelligent design makes sense. I don't believe in evolution. Um, but I wasn't religious at all. I'm still not religious. So we had Neil deGrasse Tyson on the show. Now, Neil kind of refers to himself as agnostic and somewhat atheist, depending on the conversation. When I asked him in our interview if he believes in God, he said, well, which God are you referring to? Because there's been over 18,000 deities in human society. If you go to, you go online and in a, in a Google search, you type God, God's worshiped by humans. There's a tally of all the gods ever worshiped by humans in the history of civilization. And it just goes screen after screen after screen after screen. So when you say, do you believe in God? Is there, is it, which God? Is it Zeus? Is it Poseidon? Is it the, the Jewish God? Is it the Christian God? Because the Jewish God from the Old Testament is filled with wrath, okay? All right, and, and smoting and smiting and whatever the, the, the past tense verb is. And so, to, and the New Testament, the, God is kinder, all right? A little nicer, yeah. yeah. Yeah, all right. So you look at all of this and you say, is that the God you want me to comment on? Or is there some other God? Typically, it's the Judeo-Christian blend there. In that context, I would say in my studies of the universe, I, I value evidence and I don't see evidence for any kind of um, active intelligence or power over anything. Yeah. But you, if you had it, if you didn't show it to me, I'm yeah. all in. Well, I mean, you said you don't like to be labeled an atheist, more agnostic. Yeah. And the definition of agnostic is a person who believes that nothing is known or can be known of the existence or nature of God. Yeah, I'm not, or all, anything. I'm not that's, I, agnostic comes closer to what I am than atheist does. Yeah. But all of that rest of that baggage that agnostic carries is, is off the edges for me. As much as someone believes in Jesus, like, like yourself, right? There was someone, you know, a thousand years ago that believed in Thor, the God of thunder, just as fervently as you, right? You know, we look at Thor as a Marvel character, but he's an actual God in Norse mythology. You know, there's Zeus, you go to India, you got a couple hundred deities of, of every sort and so forth. And, he personally does not believe in God because he hasn't found any scientific evidence of God. He even talked about how when x-rays were first invented, that religious people were like, okay, well, maybe this technology will allow us to actually see the soul, right? So they actually would x-ray people as they were dying to see if there was anything on the x-ray machine that would show leaving the body or anything of the sort, and they weren't able to find anything. Um, so when... As someone who's religious like yourself, when you hear someone who is not, what are your feelings towards that? I'm not religious. I want to. I don't like the term because okay. it has a well, bad what, connotation. What term do you like? I mean, you have. I'm a well, person you have of religious faith. terms tattooed on your arms right now. Well, I'm a person of faith. Okay. Okay. Let's put it that way. Christian, Christian terms. Yes. Okay. Um, look, for me, you know, it's the Bible that works for me. Okay. I believe in it a thousand percent. Which think, part do you believe in exactly, though? Because the Bible could be viewed many different ways. Like for one, in one way, it's a history book, right? It is a history book, yes. It, it, you know, I've been to Jerusalem and I remember learning so about the Old Testament yeah. and everything else like that. And a lot of the stuff mentioned in the Bible, they're it's actually pointing out, oh, and that happened on that hill over there. And this right. building behind us is this chapter in the Bible and so forth. So which part of the Bible do you believe? I believe all of it. All of it. Okay. Yeah, all fair enough. Old Testament, New Testament. All of it. I'm, I'm more of a New Testament guy because um, I'm just attracted to the life of Jesus okay. and his apostles. But for me, um, look, I can break this down very simply for you. 
and you know why my faith is strong other than the evidence that I believe supports biblical truth and that fact that it's God's word. But here's my conclusion. There's no question that Jesus was a real person. I agree. There's evidence to support that outside of the Bible. Yes. From Jewish leaders and others, right? Right. And Roman, you know. Plenty of evidence. Uh, yeah. Okay. Stuff like so that. here's how, long story short, here's how I break this down. You know, when I first came to believe in Jesus, I wanted to see what kind of man he was because I've always told, I've been told my whole life, you got to be a man's man. You know, my father brought me up that way. In the life, we were men of honor, we were men's men. So I basically separated Jesus' manhood from his deity, as it's told in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. And I studied Jesus of Nazareth. And I came away to, with this conclusion. He, for me, was the most perfect man that ever lived in every, in every sense of his character. Everything that he did. I can I can go into this for the next seven hours, okay. but I won't. So here's my conclusion. Because I believe in the Bible, I believe that it's God's word, I came up with this conclusion. If I try to emulate Jesus throughout my life, the greatest man that ever walked the face of the earth, I'm going to be a better person. Because if you look at his teachings, can't deny that. I'm going to be a better person, better husband to my wife, better father to my kids, better partner to my people. Uh, everybody in the community is going to benefit from me trying to emulate the greatest person that ever walked the face of the earth. So throughout my life, I'm going to benefit. Other people will benefit from me, right? When I die, if he's not the savior of the world, well, I'm dead anyway. So what do I have to lose? Okay. So that's, I try to make things logical, but I do believe that he is the savior of the world. I do believe that he rose again from the dead and went to heaven. So as a result of that, if I am a true follower of Jesus, not a fraudulent one, because remember, you can say a lot of things, but God knows our hearts. So if I'm true to my feeling, then when I stand on judgment, I'm going to be in heaven. I believe in heaven. I believe in hell. So you believe Very in clear. heaven and hell? 100%. So if, now, you've done a lot of things that certain Christians would say that you belong in hell. Yeah. Right? Without well, getting in, in, in Well, I don't know. No, no. Depending on how- real, No, no. Real Christians would not say that. Well, however oh. you define a real Christian, yeah. because then that's that becomes a matter of opinion as well, right? I mean, no, it's, it's all, not opinion. It's all, well, I don't know. It's I think when opinion. it comes to religion, I think it's, there, there's not exactly a uh, measuring stick- that's universal when it comes to religion. No, but let me let me tell you, right? real, real Christians have to believe in repentance. Okay. If you don't believe if you in repent your, for your sins, your sins are forgiven. If you if you sincerely repent for your sins and you accept Christ as your Savior, mm -hmm. then your sins are forgiven. It means you're born again. Correct. You have to be born again. Okay. You have to be baptized, born again, and I am. And does everyone qualify for that, regardless of? The sins that they have committed. Yes. So, um, Timothy McVeigh, who blew up a building, worst people in the world, and we always get Hitler, yeah, the worst people in the world. <laughs> right. So, so the worst, they will end up in heaven with the angels and. Listen to me. Very, very, <laughs> I'm agree. Very difficult concept for people to understand. Very much so. Okay. Extreme. Very difficult for me. Mm -hmm. But. When you measure what hell is really supposed to be like for all of eternity, never ending, and we can't even comprehend that, mm -hmm. okay, then whatever you do on this planet can never be compared to the horrors of hell for all of eternity, never ending, that's it. So here's the deal. It's very clear. Jesus says, if you confess your sins and you accept him as your savior, well, again, you can't pull a fraud on God. You can't pull a scam on him. He knows our hearts. Mm -hmm. But if we're sincere, then yes, our sins are forgiven. And that's very hard for some people to understand. Well, how could you do it? He was a serial killer. He did this. He blew up that. He did that. I'm not the judge of that. This is what the Bible tells us. Okay. So we have to believe that. Is Jesus, is, do you feel that accepting Jesus is the only way to heaven? As a Christian, yes, that's what we believe. Okay, so that means that people that have never heard of Jesus are going 
to hell okay. or purgatory. Let, let me tell you this. And I'm just throwing out, listen. No, 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 I, 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 I want to say this. I'm not God. Okay. I find it very, very difficult to believe that a four-year-old, okay, right. that can't even comprehend per, what God better is. better example. Yeah, exactly. Can't even comprehend. If a baby that dies, yeah. a four-year-old that dies that doesn't know how to read, exactly. who has no idea who Jesus exactly. is, who could barely talk. Okay. But there again, I believe that God makes provision for that. Okay. Okay. Because there is an, a way that they can know Jesus. It's impossible. So how, how could you condemn somebody like that? Yeah. I don't know what the final answer is, but I have to believe that a gracious and merciful God and a just God makes provision for that. However, an adult that has the opportunity to know Jesus, but refuses mm -hmm. and doesn't want to know because there's plenty of opportunity for that. Well, then obviously that, uh, that person doesn't qualify. So all the, the Muslim and Jewish people and all the Hindu people, they're all going to hell. Basically. Not my rule. <laughs> I didn't make it. I didn't make it. Listen, uh, I, I was born Jewish and I, I grew up Jewish. I had a bar mitzvah and everything else like that, but I'm not religious. You know, I'm atheist or agnostic, depending on how, how you want to phrase it. But I have uh, Christian people in my family and, and I always respect them. And, uh, you know, if they believe in something strongly, I would never speak down on them or never try to convince them otherwise. I feel, you know, I have close friends who are Muslims. You know what I'm saying? And I respect their religion. And, you know, I know, you know, my friend Napoleon who moved to Saudi Arabia, you know, and set up a whole, you know, set up, brought his family over there and is living a very happy life as a practicing Muslim. Mm -hmm. uh, I respect it all. I think religion uh, brings a lot of uh, good to people. Uh, and I, I you know when, when I look at it, I almost feel like it's like the way you describe when someone feels like they're religious or they're close to God, they're trying to create the best version of themselves. Right? They're trying to... Well, yeah, I, I guess you When you, you say share. follow, you know, if, if you feel Jesus was the greatest person to ever walk the earth and you try to emulate that person, you will then try to take on positive qualities. Yes. You know? But also as a Christian, let me, let me tell you this. It's not our obligation or our job to impose our faith on anyone. Mm -hmm. And we're not supposed to try to turn anybody into a Christian. It's not what we do. But we are obligated to share our faith. And I do that, you know, a hundred times a year. I mean, that's, that's what I do. Share our faith. And look, I have many Muslim friends. I have many Jewish friends. I have many friends of, that, that uh, are atheists. You know, I don't look down on anybody's belief at all. Um, I share my faith with them when I have the opportunity to. But look, I have many Muslims that, you want to know something? Muslims now looking down at our lifestyle here in the United States. Because Muslim women, you know, they live up to a certain code. Mm -hmm. And some of the women here today, you don't want to marry them. You don't want to be part. I'm sorry. I don't want people to get upset. But, you know, I'm watching things on YouTube where, you know, women that say how their body count is 30, 40, 50 guys. Well, who wants to be with somebody like that? I don't. You know, I'm just saying. It's a bit of a double standard, though. Yeah. A well, guy that's done that, absolutely. someone like myself, whose number is way higher than that, you know, I mean. Abs absolutely. It, go <laughs> it, it, it goes both ways. You're right. A woman should frown upon that with right, a guy, too. exactly. But, but, but I'm, I'm, saying, consider, I'm considered a desirable man, though. Like, I'm but you know what? You know? But Muslims think differently. Yeah, that's just true. They think differently. And you know what? I respect that. Although they are waiting for their... 13 virgins, you know, when they go to heaven. But I, you know, I, I, I mean, mean everyone, every religion has its own thing to it. And, you know, there's been a lot of religions and there's going to be a lot more religions. You know, the, the religious train is not stopping. And, um, you know, I, I think with Neil deGrasse Tyson and him being such a science guy, he doesn't feel that there is a universal intelligence that, that runs things. You know what I'm saying? He feels that the universe is chaotic and there's lots of scientific proof to support that. And he feels the way he feels. I feel the way I feel. And you feel the way let, you let feel. Him, let him explain to me, okay, how the human body, the human brain, the human can come into existence from nowhere. Let him explain that to me. Well, it's not from nowhere. It's from it a is. sperm and an egg. Oh. No, you don't believe in sperms and eggs? Yeah, but where did that come from? Uh, I mean, there's evolution. Do you believe in evolution? Where did that come from? It has to start somewhere. Well, yeah, I mean, you have cells that, that you know, I mean, you have single cell organisms. Where'd they come from? So you think that God created it all? 100%. Okay. There's no, there's no better explanation. Okay. 
Fair enough. You know, you know, a lot of evolutionists believe that some little piece of dust that was in a universe that never existed, all of a sudden exploded into some big bang and ultimately exploded into everything. How do, how do, you, how do you process that? It makes no sense whatsoever. Intelligent design makes sense. Creation makes sense.